If you've ever tried one of those newly released AI video tools and felt completely scammed by the output, you're not alone. After testing almost every single generator out there, I've noticed the same exact thing with most of them. They just don't live up to the promise. Every time I sit down, excited to try a new release, I get the same letdown. The demo on the website looks amazing, but when you actually go out to test it, the hype never matches the result. And honestly, that's the biggest problem with AI video right now. There's just too much noise and way too few tools that actually perform when you need them to. So I spent days digging through all of them, filtering out the junk, and putting together a short list of the best ones that actually deliver. And in this video, I'm gonna test each of those top tools, show you where they shine, where they fail, and most importantly, which one you should actually use whenever you need an AI video asset. And I'll also show you the one tool that lets me run all of them without paying for multiple subscriptions or juggling five different tabs at once. So the tool I'm actually using to access all of these models is called OpenArt, and I'll leave the link down in the description if you wanna follow along. Now our first AI video generator is gonna be one 2.2. To access it, I'm starting off here on the homepage of OpenArt. On the left side, I click video, and then in the select the model section, I choose one 2.2. One is developed by Alibaba and it's a flexible open source video generator designed for adaptability. What makes it stand out is that it can generate high quality cinematic clips from both text and image prompts. It's a fairly new model but it's already gaining traction because of how visually impressive the outputs can be. So now we can add our prompt. An astronaut drifts slowly through the wreckage of a shattered space station. The camera orbits around him as sunlight glints off floating metal debris, his visor reflecting the earth far in the distance. Weightless atmospheric and cinematic. There's also a button here called auto enhance. If I turn this on, it automatically refines and improves the prompt. This is a valuable feature because even if you're brand new to prompting, it helps ensure that your descriptions come out optimized for the best possible results. Now, let's go over the settings. First aspect ratio. I'm just gonna leave it as it is at 16 to nine, which is the standard widescreen resolution and perfect for most video formats. Next, resolution. I'll set it to the highest available, which is 720p. While this isn't full HD, it's still solid for testing and it helps speed up render times. For the video mode, I'll choose Pro, which is built to generate higher quality results compared to the basic setting. Finally, I click Create. Now, in terms of speed, one is pretty decent. It's not the fastest generator out there, but it's also not the slowest. So I'll just let it generate and I'll come back once it's finished. And now that the video is done generating, let's take a look at it. At first glance, it looks really good. Even though it's not full HD, the quality is still very visually pleasing. Everything in the video floats the way it would in space and it all feels natural. It really does look realistic. Another thing worth pointing out is how well it follows the prompt. The prompt adherence for one is actually really impressive. You can see all the little details, the sunlight in the background, the reflections on the visor, and everything feels aesthetically accurate to how space is usually depicted in movies. So overall, I'd say this is a very solid result for Juan, especially when you consider how affordable it is to run compared to a lot of other generators out there. But Juan isn't only good in terms of text to video. It's also really strong when it comes to image to video. This is where you take a still image and bring it to life with motion. And it's especially useful for creators who already have artwork designs or reference frames they want to animate. So now let's check this out. I have this image right here, an image of a phoenix bird sitting on a branch. I just drag the image over into the image tab on the site here and paste it into the Dropbox. Now we're able to add a prompt. So for this one, I'm going with this. Here I'll select the maximum resolution, which is 720p and hit create. And now that the video is finally done generating, let's take a look at it. From the start, it actually looks really good. The way the phoenix spreads its wings feels very natural, and that's something Juan handles really well. But you can see a bunch of strange explosion-like particles around it, and they kind of ruin the immersion. To me, it just doesn't look right, and it makes the video feel almost unusable. Now, luckily, Juan isn't expensive when it comes to image to video, as well as text to video. So you could actually afford to do that a couple of times until you get something cleaner. But just in general, I like the results I get from text to video, a lot more than image to video. And I'd say that's where it performs much better. So what I would personally use one for is some quick generation of videos that you might need for fast assets. It gives you really good quality at a low cost, but it's maybe still not there yet in terms of being super precise with image to video. That's kind of where I find myself running into problems, but from text only, it is very, very usable. So if you're looking for something cheap and fast, one is a really good model for that. But if you are looking for something a little bit more realistic and smooth in terms of how it generates, Kling AI, our next video generator, 
might be the one for you. It's used for a little bit more of that professional grade video content. And this is exactly what we're going to test it on right now. So heading back to text to video, I'm going to select Kling 2.1, which is its newest and best performing model. I'll click this and as you can see, the workflow updates. Now for the prompt, I'm going to paste in the one I already have prepared. A violinist performs in a neon lit alleyway during heavy rain. The camera pans upwards from reflective pavement through the musician under an umbrella. Rain shimmers in slow motion as the camera circles 360 degrees around. Hyper real, moody, cinematic texture. I'm also going to select auto enhance for this one as well. For the duration, I'm actually going with a higher one, which is 10 seconds. The rest of the settings, I'm just going to leave as they are, and then I'll click create. Now Kling, especially version 2.1, when you go for higher duration times, is gonna be a little bit more expensive than one, but that really comes down to quality. What's actually really good is that Kling is one of the more established names in AI video generation. It's been around for a while, and you've probably heard about it before. It comes up almost every time I do something related to AI video, simply because it is that consistent and that good. Now that the video is done generating, let's take a look at it. Looking at our video, we can clearly see how accurate it is to the prompt. It very easily takes in everything we just wrote down and it follows it really well. Looking at the quality, it does lean a little more toward an animated feel. Sometimes with Kling, that's the vibe I get. It can look slightly 3D or stylized, but it's still a very solid result and very usable across multiple settings. Honestly, it's quite impressive. Now, the next thing I wanted to test out is doing something a little bit more advanced. So I head to image to video, and here I'm dropping in this image I have of a melting clock on a marble-like pedestal. This should test the model's ability to handle more advanced concepts. For the prompt, I'll paste this in. Clock face sags, umbrella light, solid numerals, slide like liquid, pedestal cracks slowly as the camera zooms in. Dreamlike, hyper-realistic. For the duration, I'm going short, just five seconds. Then for the quality mode, I'm going with master. Both pro and master are quite similar in terms of output. But from my experience, master tends to do better with more advanced prompts. It usually understands the environment a bit better and just feels more coherent. So with that set, I'll go ahead and click create. And looking at our final result, the video came out looking really cool. I'd say that Kling quite well understood this concept and it made the video look really, really good. The only thing missing is the numerals sliding down from the clock. So if you want to test it with a little bit more advanced prompts, you can definitely do that. It will understand what you're talking about. And if not, you can always go back, reprompt it a little better, maybe play around with ChatGPT and just ask it to improve your prompt. One thing to note is that it does take a little more time in terms of generation, especially coming from one, Kling feels a bit longer on the wait side. So you will have to be a bit patient with your projects. But in general, if you are looking for something that is still affordable, while also giving you a pretty realistic and high-end feel to your videos, then Kling is definitely a model worth trying. It has earned its respect in the AI video generation space, and it really deserves that reputation. But without going too far away from the hyper-realistic models, we're gonna move over to the widely known Google VO3, which is basically the best at it. Google VO3 is the state-of-the-art text-to-video model released by Google. What makes it stand out is that it can generate fairly synchronized video with audio included, which is something a lot of these other models are still trying to get right. Currently, Google is the best at this, and it's very much praised for its lifelike motion and cinematic polish. One thing to note though, is that with the level of quality that VO3 brings, it does tend to cost a lot more than other models. But nevertheless, we're going to test it out. So going back to text to video, I'm going to select VO3 as the model. For the prompt, I'm going with this right here. For the audio, I'm turning it on since that's one of the best features about Google VO3. For the resolution, I'm setting it to 1080p. And for the video mode, I'm going with normal. You could use fast, but in my experience, fast loses a bit of the quality that makes Google VO3 worth it. And honestly, if you're already spending money on Google VO3, there's no reason not to go with the best possible video mode. So I'm gonna click create. Now this one actually takes a little bit longer than Kling, which makes it one of the slower to render models. You're not gonna be sitting there for half an hour, but depending on your settings, a single video could take up to about five minutes. So I'll let it render and I'll come back once it's done. And looking back at our video, I can clearly say that it is very, very easy to see why this tool costs as much as it does. The results are extremely impressive. The orb with the thunder looks very realistic. The sound and the bass of the thunder, especially if you're wearing good headphones, just feel incredible. The way the droplets fall from the orb, the way the arm itself is rendered, all of it looks natural. 
Honestly, if someone showed me this and told me it was man-made by some CGI artist, I would have 100% believed them. Another thing worth mentioning is that VO3 is actually very good at generating people, so people talking, moving, and interacting. But I think results like this also show how strong it is for more abstract, cinematic features. That's what I'm trying to showcase here. Not just whether the models can do simple videos, but also how far they can push creative, surreal outputs. So with that being said, let's check out how good it is when it comes to image to video. So for image to video, I'm going to use this image of a rock with runes carved into it. For the prompt itself, I'm going to write this. The glyphs pulls brighter, mist swirls, moss trembles. The camera pushes in with a faint mystical hum, then rumbles as it reveals a magical cauldron, glowing with rose diamonds scattered all around it. So this is a pretty heavy prompt, leaning more on particles and environmental understanding, which should really test the model. For the settings, I'm going to leave them exactly the same as we did for our first text to video generation. For the audio, I'll keep it on. For the resolution, I'll set it to 1080p. And for the video mode, I'll stick with normal as well. Now I'll click create, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the result from Google VO3. And looking back at our result, it came out looking very, very good. It felt really cinematic. The audio wasn't as strong or as bass heavy as it was with the thunder orb we just made in text to video, but it was still really cool and added a lot to the experience. I would say you could visibly see that the quality here wasn't quite as sharp. And that's probably because we used an image that was lower in quality. So one thing to keep in mind when you're using Google VO for image to video is to always use the highest quality images possible when you input them. The better the source, the better the output. But besides that, it stayed very close to the prompt. It did everything it was supposed to do. I wasn't being too strict on every single detail here, but overall, it did a very good job of capturing the concept. So if you're looking for something high-end, really high quality, and with very good audio built in, then Google VO is definitely a tool for that. Now, of course, it does come at a cost. It is the most expensive, out of all the tools in today's lineup. But nevertheless, it delivers very, very good results. But if you are looking for something way less expensive while still getting pretty consistent results, Seadance, our next tool, is definitely an amazing option for that. Seadance is made by ByteDance and is designed for multi-shot, emotional, story-driven generation, as well as just generally high quality prompting and video outputs. One of its standout features is that it can keep a very consistent style and maintain characters across different cuts if you choose to use that feature. And that's what we're going to start testing. So I'm heading back to open art, switching over to text to video and selecting Seadance as the model. For the prompt, I'm going to write, a cloaked traveler enters an abandoned cathedral. Shot one, a wide shot, the heavy door creaks open, sunlight piercing through dust. Shot two, tracing from behind as he walks down the aisle, footsteps echo. Shot three, close-ups of his hand brushing cracked stained glass, glowing faintly. Shot four, tight shot of his eyes, Colors flicker in the reflections. Smooth transition, cinematic tension. I'm gonna use Enhance for this one. For quality, I'll go with Pro. For duration, I'll set it to 10 seconds. And for resolution, I'm going with the maximum available, which is 1080p. Now, even though we're loading Seadance with a pretty heavy prompt, it's still gonna generate a lot faster than Google VO, simply because it doesn't have as much high-end rendering packed into it. Even though it is a full HD model, it's noticeably faster. So that's definitely something to note. If you're looking for fast outputs, while still keeping solid visual quality, Seadance is definitely a good tool for that. Now looking back at the video, it actually came out looking really good. Everything in terms of the quality of the generation is solid. Where it does feel a little bit off is when the traveler stretches his hand toward the window. Those moments don't really look very realistic. But again, this is a cheaper model and it's built for faster generation. Maybe if I had simplified the prompt a little bit and not gone as heavy with the details, I would have gotten a better result. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. With Seadance, don't go quite as advanced in your prompting as you would with some of the more high-end generators. But in general terms, I think it came out looking really cool. Video feels great overall and definitely something worth playing around with. Now heading over to image to video, I'm going to paste in this image of a floating city. For the prompt, I'm going with cloud rift slowly, lanterns flicker. Staircase rotates slightly as the camera glides past. Eternal, seamless motion. For the quality mode, I'm going with pro, leaving the duration at 10 seconds and setting the resolution to 1080p. Then I'll click create. It definitely looks realistic and the movement flows naturally, but there's nothing particularly special about it. That being said, if you're looking for something that's faster, where you can pump out a couple of assets at a pretty cheap price and still get a decent level of quality, 
then Cdance is definitely a solid option for that. And if you really want to crank out videos super fast, generate some ready to go assets in seconds, then Hilo is very much your best option. It delivers ultra clean short form video content from either text or images, and it's streamlined to be really fast, letting you bring your ideas to life in just a few seconds. So for our text prompt, I'm going to switch back over to text to video, and in the model selection, I'll pick Minimax Hilo 2, which is the medium axe version I see here. Then I'll paste in my prompt. Inside a dark hangar, a metallic paper airplane glides under a single spotlight. The camera tracks it in slow motion as it loops and flips, light glinting off the surface. Physics based cinematic quality. For the settings, I'm going with six seconds and I'll select the highest resolution available. Then I'll click create. And looking back at our video, it actually looks pretty decent. I wouldn't say the quality is top notch, but it's still a very good result considering how fast the generation was. Now switching to image to video, I'm gonna paste in this image of an hourglass. For the prompt, I'll keep it pretty simple. Sand flows upwards instead of downwards, glowing particles scatter into the air, cracks in the hourglass spread slowly as the camera circles around it in a smooth orbit. For the generation, I'll go with 10 seconds and set the resolution to medium because I'm curious to see how it looks like. Then I'll click create. Now looking back at this result, I didn't really see exactly what I asked for in the prompt. The sand still flowed downwards instead of upwards. And then by the end, it introduced this strange effect that didn't really fit. So in general, I'd say don't overload your prompts too much when using Hilo. Keep it simple. Maybe just add a little bit of motion, like a slight camera move or some subtle animation to a single object or person in the image. But if you give it something too advanced, it tends to just do its own thing. So for very fast assets, for when you just need something quick and lightweight, Hilo is definitely a good tool. But if you want to go more advanced with your projects, I definitely recommend going with another model out there. So now you actually know the best way to use each model out there, what they're great for, and also the areas where they fall short. You've seen how One, Kling, Google Vio, Cdance, and Hilo all compare and which ones are worth your time, depending on what you're trying to create. But having subscriptions to all of those different models is not only expensive, it's also time consuming. Going back and forth between them in separate workflows kills your efficiency and it destroys your ability to deliver results. That's exactly why I use OpenArt, the tool you've seen me using throughout this entire video. Every single model is inside a simple workflow that's easy to access and gets updated consistently whenever a new model comes out. It just makes it unreasonable to pay for separate subscriptions when you can have everything right here in one place. And OpenArt isn't just video generation, it also gives you image generation and character creation built right in. So if you want to create professional quality AI videos, like the ones I just showed you, you can do it all inside one platform without ever needing another subscription. So go ahead and sign up to OpenArt using my link in the description and start creating. 